Welcome to today's service. Those of you who are in the house and those who are joining us virtually. We thank God for this day and for the opportunity to come and serve Him with all that we are, with every bit of our being, because He has been so gracious, so kind to us. I would like for you this morning, or sometime today, to just pick up the 46th Psalm and read that for yourself. Either the whole chapter or focus on the first two verses. I think God is saying something extremely important to us, coming from Psalms, David. He is our refuge. We'll take a look at that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for touching each one of us that's here in this place today and those who are joining us virtually. We thank you because you gave us Jesus and we thank you because you have allowed each one of us to see the dying of a new day. Father God, there is so much evil going around this world. The devil is busy. He was there in Buffalo, New York yesterday. We have to be gracious. We have to be thankful that we're still here. Father God, we ask that you comfort the families of those 10 individuals who were killed. And that you also comfort those who have family members who were wounded. And Father God, we also pray for the individual who committed the crime who needs help. And as I said, the devil is busy. He has only one purpose, to kill and destroy. Let us keep God at the forefront of everything that we do and everything that we say. Invite him into our hearts, our minds every day and thank him because even though there's heartache there's joy somewhere even though there is confusion there's also order somewhere ask him to order our steps and keep us and we will be kept these and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus, for which there is no other name, the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. We only have one announcement for you today, and this is a very, very important announcement for the pastoral search ministry. And you've heard it before the last few, few days. But we are inviting every member of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church to attend a virtual Mount Zion Fellowship Gathering on this Thursday, May 19th at 6.30 p.m. We will start on time. And we hope you're there for that, because if you're not there then, you're going to miss something. And at that time, we are going to share with you summaries of the responses that we have received from members of Mount Zion. As we started out on this journey to seek a pastor, so please, please come out 
and join us. One other thing that has come to our attention, and this is for the people who are here in the sanctuary. We understand that a couple of people have been walking up and down the street looking in cars. So make sure that your car is secured and is locked. And if it's not, please do so now. Thank you. Good morning, Mount Zion. Good morning. Uh, just to add anything to, uh, to what Deacon Thompson said about security, uh, if you have something in your car that could be taken or stolen in pure, clear, clear view, you need to remove that. Because there is no such thing as security for a thief. They'll break your window. So if you got something laying out, uh, you probably need to uh, take care of that. Uh, time to uh, offer to a prayer. I would just like to add that uh, on what Deacon Thompson just said that a songwriter wrote in times like these, you need a savior. But at the end of that song, he said in times like these, we have one. We have a savior. So. We are grateful to the God that we serve. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have given to us. We have been blessed here at Mount Zion to be able to continue to do your work. Although our numbers have fallen off, our finances have increased and allowed us to do those things that we need to do to carry out your word your ministry. So Father, we thank you in times like these. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. physically, as well as for those who are joining us virtually. We just want to say that we're just glad to come together and we're just going to bless the Lord. So if you want to sing with me, come on and bless the Lord with me. Amen.
Thompson talked about and, and, and what's occurring around our country and even here. We, we ought not get so comfortable that we consider that a couple of weeks quiet time in Harrisburg means that the craziness is over. Uh, there's, there's stuff going on around us, all around us in all sorts of ways. And even in all of that, we've got a work to do and we've got a resource in God that allows for us to do just that. And so for everyone and for all the grieving that we, we go through, just think about how many times, uh, especially for so many of us that are grandparents and parents and grandparents, that you see a picture come across your, your way or those that might be on Facebook and somebody showing that new grandchild uh, or that new child or that, that friend of, you know, and folks, and then, and then how many times when we stop to think it over or when folks around us will acknowledge the good that is around us. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I just was being a, a, a football player in another life and this and that. I was so encouraged when Mike uh, uh, Parsons was in town, uh, I think a week ago, with Foundation doing best he could for his community, although he doesn't live here right now, but this is still home in his community. So I just give thanks for the hope that comes to us through Christ Jesus in that. Uh, as we follow now, and, and you'll see that even as we come right now, our number's here, our number's not here, we're watching virtually this and that, but Rip Crawford, I did read the scripture, <laughs> and the scripture that's getting ready to be read to you by Sister Joanne will remind you of, this, uh, 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 of, of the encouragement of the hope that comes to us because of the body and blood of Jesus. That every day, the day we got up, and probably got up in half a sweat because it was warmer than when we, when we laid our heads down last night. Something out a little bit brighter than it was yesterday. New day, new opportunity, and if we can't do anything else in life, we can say thank you. Can't say nothing else in life. We can't say thank you. And uh, and in that, I'll just, uh, Sister Joanne, you come on and, and uh, we're going to have that. That'll be followed by our prayer list and our morning prayer. Good morning, Mount Zion family and friends. If you're able to stand, please do so. Our scripture this morning is taken from the 150th chapter of Psalm, verses 1 through 6, and this is from the NIV version. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. 
Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything, yeah, right. let everything, yeah. let everything Mount Zion that has breath praise the Lord. Yeah. God's word has been blessed. As we approach praying time, we do want to be mindful of, and, and each week we've been reading off this list of names, and I'm hoping that you all, everybody listening, or here and not, has their own prayer list. Praise ye the Lord in every way possible. Let everything, you know what, we are everything. Everything, everybody, all that lives, every, everything that, that, that has living and, and has being, Praise the Lord in that we, in, in our prayer list, and, and uh, just want to share as, as, as we share that, and, and uh, addressing our priorities. We, we make a whole lot of things priority. You know, whether, whether it's getting up in the morning to eat, or going out to shop, or doing this and doing that, whatever. And at the end of the day, we, when we find our struggles, sometimes it just takes that to remind us, praise the Lord, pray. Where are our priorities? And we gotta work real hard on that. And we gotta work real, real, real hard on making God the first priority, so much so that when we go through our individual prayer list and we consider the things that, even that we share amongst us all in this body, that we do so having given God his proper respect, his proper preeminence in our very living. It's important, you all, it's very important. Uh, having said that, from our prayer list, and again, just give us a holler and let us know because we can add and detract as we need. But from our prayer list that we've been continuing for this May, less violence in our communities. My goodness, is that, it's happening anyway. The violence is happening anyway, but it's up to us to keep praying, to be vigilant in our prayers, to be steadfast, unmovable, unshaken by the events of today. Let us continue to pray for less violence in our communities, for our fully engaged communities. And what does that say to us? Fully engaged communities, meaning we don't just talk about it, but at every opportunity, whether it's in voting, in sharing, in supporting some, and running out to do meals on wheels like Sister Gail leads us to do, you know, and, 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 and the other things that we partner with around town, fully engaged means that it's not, it's not good enough just to look out and see, but to avail ourselves. We pray for the people of Ukraine as that, that violence continues. Uh, we pray for world climate and, and, and economies that we would be aware as we see things, see things and not just pass them off. We pray for our Mount Zion family and particularly for our pastoral search ministry. We have charged a, a few folks with digging so deep into God, so deep into his word, so deep in, in looking and seeking his guidance and direction in all of that. And so we charge these folks and we have to continue to pray for them that they hear and they see, and while they're doing that, in our encouraging for the pastoral search ministry, we too will know just exactly what God is saying to us when it comes to our pastor uh, in that. And then our other ministries as well. Then we now want you to continue to pray. Pray for the family of Brother Darrell Cox, who passed recently. Pray for the uh, Kristen Primus and her family. Pray for the Beaton family in their time of bereavement. Let's continue to pray for Miss Cozy Tillman and the Tillman family. Pray for, uh, continue to pray for the family of Ethel Brooken, 
Let's keep praying for Brother Jay Robinson and Lucinda Parker and Mitchell Winfield and Lee Bowman and Sammy Childs and Jada Childs and Miss Anna Carter and Miss Hattie Chisholm. Continuing, we will in prayer for uh, the Davenports and Lynn Williams uh, family. Also for the family of Miss Geraldine Curry as she passed. And so we want to keep this to the Thompsons and, and the rest of the family and her family in prayer, please, as, as well uh, with that. Uh, uh, for the Mary, Sister Mary Keys and for Rick Sales and Evelyn Early, for the family of Lana Say, uh, for the Wesley Early and his family, for Brother John Winston, for the family of, 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 of Deacon Early's uh, cousin, uh, Brother Robert Rawson, pray for the, that family as he passed as well uh, in their special time. Pray for Miss uh, Florence Mosby and Terry Robinson, Mark Beasley, Ronald and Omega Gregory, Pierce Hillen family, Miss Ollie Milligan, George Moreau, James Kim Purcell, and Stephen Crone. And then as we had praise items, and, and so we continue to just be thankful that we're back in the house being able to gather as we are in praise and in worship and in doing so. And then, again, as we started out talking about is in hope, remembering that because of God's promises, there's still better days ahead and better days coming our way. Let's pray. Lord, you've heard uh, even just this list, and we would that you tend to our prayers and our every prayer and, and supplication. God, we just thank you for being God, God by all by yourself, preeminent, omnipresent, here, there, and everywhere, in everything, maker of all things, and just all things in yourself. Lord, we just thank you for being God, and we thank you for this opportunity. We've been granted this day as you watched over us last night to allow us to wait to see a new day. And Lord, we just thank you for it. Lord, we just thank you that in the midst of all the evil that besets us and all around us, that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And we thank you for the hope that is provided. We thank you for the encouragement that you give us when we stop and when we think it over. So, Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, we, 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 we pray right now for those that are bereaved and, and are, are going through a loss. Uh, just understanding and being thankful, Lord, for the precious memories that you give us all of those of all those that have gone before us. And, Lord, we just would that you continue to allow these families to be buoyed by those precious memories and just be thankful for the time that we have had. Lord, we thank you for the intermingling of families and bodies and individuals and churches and communities that allows for us to, to grow in your grace and in your mercy, understanding that each opportunity is an opportunity to let our light shine. And Lord, so we just thank you for the light that emanates from each of us. And Lord, help us as we grow again through your grace and your mercy that we grow, that our light might shine. That we don't have to shout a word, but our very living is enlightening to those around us. Enough that we can share as we've been called to, to share that we might all come to know the joy of the salvation that is provided for us. Lord, we just thank you. Not enough ways to thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for life. We thank you for living. We thank you for loving. We thank you for sharing. We thank you for caring. We thank you for opportunity. And again, most of all, we just thank you for Jesus. Lord, we just pray for those uh, that were able to come out and come to the house that we might praise and, and, and to do this together. And we pray for those that are able to virtually and online and watching. Lord, that we might all know and, and, and know in our hearts and our spirits the community that you called for us to be. Lord, we thank you that before there was a place and a time, as the word said, before the foundations of the earth, that you called us forth as, as your family, as yours. And then understanding our own weaknesses, Lord, you gave us Jesus, that we might find our way home and understanding even as a prodigal that our opportunity 
to share in the greatest love of all is right in your hands and home. Lord, bless Mount Zion and bless our, our individuals and, and bless us collectively. Lord, allow, even as we seek a pastor, that each of us individually might be seeking, seeking the understanding, seeking to heal your ear, your still small voice that speaks to our spirits in such a way that we cannot be dissuaded by the wiles of this world, by the evil around us, by the distractions that would take our eyes off of you. But Lord, bless us that we be steadfast again, unmovable, just always excited about the opportunity you grant us just by the rare buried breath that you gave us this day and on every day that we might shine and be the very best versions of ourselves that we can be on this day. Lord, help us that we might be a blessing and we, we can be a blessing to each other. Lord, we just thank you even as we acknowledge the glory that you remind us of, that the glory and the joy that we can see on this side of eternity with excitement about the blessing that you promised us throughout eternity. Lord, we just thank you for that, and, 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 and we thank you that even today, as we come in worship, as we come in praise, Lord, that let everything in us just be excited about the opportunity to praise and to be in the number. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blessing of life and the life that you provide for us. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No other way to say it, even as we end this prayer, than simply by saying Jesus. 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 Lord, as always, in all that we say and everything that we do and all that we are, Lord, make us a
and devotion to God. We also need to be cognizant of the fact that these attributes also can be attributed to man. It's a fine line that we're walking. So we have to be careful not to be caught up and find yourself lifting yourself up or a man up to the state of deity and falling into idolatry. God said, I am your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the biblical times, Egypt was and still is an actual territory, an actual land. But today, Egypt could be symbolic of a place of darkness, a place where trouble keeps drawing its ugly head, a place where it seems to be a spiraling pit of quicksand dragging you down, down, down into a society of violence, of political unrest, of financial insecurity, of food shortages, wars, and depression. A place where we want God to come and deliver us. God, hear our cries. God said that there shall be no other gods before me. In other words, we are not to elevate any deity, any image, any man, or any image above him. God said, thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity, the sins, of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, but, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. These commandments are found in the book of Deuteronomy. You need to look them up. Therefore, it behooves us to praise and worship the Lord only, not man, or things. We are admonished to praise and worship God in the good times as well as the bad times. For there is power in praise and worship. We are so accustomed to saying those three little words, praise the Lord. It comes so easily to our mouth that it may sometimes have lost its luster and power it becomes habitual. Praise the Lord rolls out of our mouths without a thought because we have been conditioned to say that over the years at appropriate times. How many of us think about it before we even say it? Praise the Lord is like a direct prayer line to God in praising him for all that he has done. Saying praise the Lord is just the starting point. When you say praise the Lord, you keep on a moving. I praise the Lord for, etc., etc., etc. And if the words of praise don't come to your mind, consider the book of Psalms. From whence comes our text of the day. Psalm is a book of praise with worship embedded in it. Psalms is the actual song book that the Israelites used. Just like we have a hymnal to sing from, there are 150 psalms or songs in the book of Psalms. And these psalms, these, I'm sorry, these songs express every feeling, every attitude that people have as they travel through life. And according to a life-connecting Bible, they are broken up into life points. For example, there are two ways to live in chapter 1. The Lord's chosen king can be found in chapter 2. A morning prayer can be found in chapter 3. An evening prayer can be found in chapter 4. A morning prayer for protection can be found in chapter 5. A prayer of mercy in troubled times can be found 
in chapter 6. A prayer of fairness can be found in chapter 7. And a description of the Lord's greatness can be found in chapter 8. There is a theme for every chapter in the book of Psalms. Of Psalms and we need to be able to just praise him as we read. When you read it, you become enthralled by all the praises that are going up to God our Heavenly Father. Praise ye the Lord, for he is worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. Some might feel a little bit timid about praising God. I mean about praising God openly. We know about him. We pray to him. But do we ever take time to stop and praise him as we go through our busy days? Do we praise him for who he is? Do we praise him for what he has done in our lives? Do we praise him for his keeping power? Do we praise him for his mercy and grace? Do we praise him for his love? Do we let God know how much we appreciate and honor and love him or do we just kind of put him to the back side and take him for granted and sometimes just keep our mouths closed are we willing to have the rocks cry out in our behalf instead of praising god for ourselves i understand because it's hard at first to step out in faith and open our mouths to praise God. We are, I don't know whether I want to praise him because out loud because 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 I wonder what it would look like to other people. I wonder who might hear me. I wonder what other people might say about me. I wonder if they will point their fingers at me and laugh at me because I'm standing up and I'm praising him. I wonder if the people will treat me differently. Will they shun me or, or think that there's something strange about me or stay away from me once I start opening up my mouth to praise God? Well, I say, so what if they do? Don't worry about what they say. Just worry about yourselves, ourselves, praising God. Be more concerned about what God thinks about us than what man thinks about us. That's important. God is worthy to be praised no matter what happens. He is worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be honored. And listen, when you start praising God, God shows up in the middle of your praise. He, he, he will definitely show up in the middle of your praise. So when praise begins to flow, there seems to be a shift in the atmosphere, like there is an electrical charge going on in the middle of that when you start to speak out your praises of God. So what do you do with that? What do you do when you have that bubbling up on the inside and you feel so good and you feel those praises? Do you, do you suppress it? Or do you just let it fly? Just release it? If you want to feel God in your life, instead of just hearing somebody talk about him or listening to somebody to talk about him, if you want to start to feel God in your life, just start praising him and watch him show up. I'm telling you, he will be there in the middle of your praise. Start praising him and watch all the negativity that you were feeling around you disappear because all that negativity was created by Satan to try to keep you away from God. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Try him. Try God. Read his word and find out for yourself. Find out what you may have been missing. And when you find it out, then start praising God. And I'm telling you, you will never ever be the same again. For the Bible says, make a joyful noise. That's praise unto the Lord. All ye lands, everyone, everyone. It doesn't matter what your ethnic background is, what country you came from. He says, all ye lands, everyone. 
everyone is supposed to praise him. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Singing is another form of praise. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be faithful unto him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is what? Everlasting. And his truth endureth to what? To all generations. There are different types of praises. Tara, T-O-W, D-A-H, means thanksgiving. David was always praising God. Yada, Y-A-D-A-H. The root word is Y-A-D, and it means hand. It means lifting up your hands in praise and reverence and worship that we see so often. And Barak means to be blessed. It can be heard in a Hebrew blessing, Barak Atta Adonai, which means, blessed are you, Lord. Shabbat. Now, I know you heard that one. Shabbat. It means to shout, to shout a praise for the Lord. Zamar means playing an instrument. All these instruments in the in the in wherever it is just to glorify the Lord and quite possibly with singing. Hala means to H A L A L means to make a show, a rave, to boast about the Lord, to boast about him. And tell Hala is a combination of all the previous words. There are a couple of Bible stories that you know about that I just want to eclipse so that you can see God's praise, see his power in action. One of them was, remember Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were in the city of Philippi, and they were going to a place of prayer when all of a sudden a servant girl came and followed them. She had special powers. She earned a lot of money for her masters because she would tell people about their fortunes. You know, that's not changed today in some of the amusement centers. You know there are still fortunes that tell us in the amusement parks that we need to stay away from. This lady, she found Paul and Silas shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God. They are telling you how to be saved. You might ask how in the world did she know that? She knew that because there were demon powers in the middle and inside of her. And the devil knows who God is and knows who his saints are. So he knows. So yes, yes, yes. These men are the servants of the Most High God, telling you how you can be saved. She kept this up for several days. And finally, Paul turned to her. And listen what he said. He said to the spirit inside of her, not to her. But the spirit, the evil spirit who was residing in her by the power of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And immediately the spirit came out. It was the power of God working through Paul. The owners of this girl were so upset because she couldn't make them any more money. She was free. They grabbed Paul and Silas and took them to the Roman rule and rulers and said, these men are making trouble for us. They are saying things against Rome. And the crowd joined in the attack. There's something about a crowd mentality. You might not be and want to go with the crowd, but when there's a whole bunch of people around you doing certain things, sometimes you might be persuaded to join in the crowd. This is what happened here. The a crowd began to attack them. They were beaten. They didn't do anything wrong. They were beaten with rocks. They were stripped of their clothes. And they were thrown into prison. With their feet between two large blocks of wood in what they call stocks. They couldn't go anywhere. They were falsely accused. Beaten and cast into prison. On a trip to Rome very many years ago, 
I was privileged to see one of those Roman jails. It was underneath, it was in the basement level, underneath a building. And we were able to look in and it was nothing but stone. Where there was supposed to be a bed, it was a mound of stone. Where there was supposed to be a pillow, was a mound of stone. And it was very dark and dank in there. It was gray and it was dark. And you wanted to get yourself out of there as quickly as possible. There was a, just a little bit of a window at the top, just a little one, just a little one, to be able to put in some light. So this was a dark place. This was a Roman jail that I was able to witness. And here, Paul and Silas were in this place. You can imagine what they must have felt. They were hurting, they were in pain, because they had been beaten. Nobody gave them anything soft to, to, be, uh, to be on. No one gave them anything to wipe up their wounds, the blood, they, they, nobody did any of that. They were probably hungry. And you would have thought that they were angry and embittered because they knew they had no business being here. But because of false lies, here they were. What would you have done? Let me tell you what they did, because most people would have been upset. But in the middle of this, these two, in the middle of their pain, they pushed through their pain and what they were feeling, and they began to pray. And they began to praise God. It was about midnight that Paul and Silas were singing songs of praise and worshiping God at midnight. Now, the sound went far because the other prisoners heard it. Here was these two men, not crying, not complaining, but praising God and singing praises to them. I don't know how they found the strength to do that throughout their pain, but they pushed forward. They pushed forward and they praised God from whom all blessings flow. Yeah. Yeah. Then suddenly, suddenly, I tell you, I tell everybody, I love the word suddenly in the Bible. Because for me, it means that something extraordinary is about to happen. Suddenly. Suddenly. And it did. Suddenly. There was a strong earthquake. Listen to this. I told you it was a stone jail, right? That shook the foundation of the jail. The earthquake shook this hard rock formation, this foundation of the jail. And all the doors doors of the jail, that meant the other prisoners too, broke open and all the prisoners were freed from their chains. The jailer woke up. He probably heard the noise, probably felt the tremors and saw that all the jail doors were open and that all the prisoners were freed from their chains and thinking they had escaped. He was about to take his own life. But Paul said, don't do it. Don't do it. For we are all still here. The jailer told somebody, come get me a light. I got to see this. Let me have a light. He had a light and he was trembling, going to check on the prisoners that which he had charge of. And with fear, he saw that they were all there. And with fear, trembling, he fell down before Paul in silence because he had just seen and witnessed the power of God. He said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And they said, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and all the people in your house and that's just what happened. God's power.
power showed up in the middle of Paul and Silas's praise and worship. Now, I cannot tell you about anybody else's experience with praise, but I can share you, share up to you, mine, my own. It took me a minute to figure it out, what was happening. But when it was happening over and over and over again, I said, okay, God, I know this has got to be you. And when it happened over and over again, it was so awesome. I did not have words. Music seems to be a catalyst for me to experience God's presence. Whether I'm listening to it or whether I'm singing, in the middle of singing and worshiping, I seem to be immediately lifted up into his presence. And if my hands and my arms are raised in worship, I can feel a tingling like electricity coming down through my fingers and moving down my arms. And when I surrender to his presence, it is like an out-of-body experience. Yes. My body is still in this world, but my spirit is in the spiritual realm with him. It's hard to articulate and it's hard to explain, but I tell you this, it is real and it is wonderful. Yes. Praise ye the Lord. You need to need, there's nothing like experiencing God's power and, and his presence in the praises that you read up to him. Remember, remember, he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And when you praise him, that is more true than ever before. Because you know he's with you and he lets you know that he's with you. Don't worry, I got you. I'm here with you. I'm taking care of everything. Just keep your eyes on me. For Paul and Silas, God's power showed up in their praises. In the Old Testament, we hear about Joshua and the army of Israel. The people of Jericho were so afraid of the Israelites and because they had heard of this God who protected this people, and mind you, they were coming around, there was a whole lot of people, there were thousands of them, that they decided they were gonna close their city gates. They had these walls all around the city, and they would decide they were going to close these gates and lock them and put guards on them so that they could not get in. Listen, I don't care how much men try. No one, no one can stop God's plan or purpose for his own. It won't work. So the Lord said to Joshua, listen, I have given you Jericho. Now, mind you, it was all locked up and guarded. But the Lord said, I'm going to give you Jericho, its kind and all of its fighting men. March around that city with your army once a day for six days. Joshua had to have faith enough to believe God at his word to do what he said. Can you imagine the speculation and the fear of those inside those walls? as they watched this group of people just marching around, and it wasn't just one time, but it was every day, this group of people were just marching around, and they, they probably thought, well, my goodness, are they gonna attack us? Are they not gonna attack us? Are they gonna scale the walls? Are they not gonna scale the walls? What are these people gonna do? We're inside these walls. God also said to have seven priests. Seven is the number of completion. Carry the trumpets made from the horns of the male sheep and have them march in front of the ark. So not only were they marching around, but they also had the ark with them. And on the seventh day, God said, march around the city seven times. Now, I don't know how large the city was, but they marched around this city seven times and had the priest, he said, blow the trumpets as they marched, but they weren't to say a word. They will make, God said, one long blast on the trumpets. And when you hear that sound, have all the people give a shout. This is the shout that's called Shabbat. It was a shout of praise 
for the Lord. The walls, the Lord told him, of Jericho will fall down, and the people will be able to go straight on into the city. And the people shouted, and the walls of Jericho fell down, not because of what they did, but because of the power of God. God's power brought those walls down. And because the people were obedient to God's word, God brought those walls down. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, and no one can keep God from carrying out his will. Yeah. The power of praise and worship connects us individually and sometimes corporately to the manifestation of the power of God. One writer said, praise has the power to overcome the boundaries of race, class, and even the barrier that divides the spiritual world from the physical world. It is erased when all of those who bow to the Lamb offer their praise in songs and prayer. The power of praise and worship openly signifies to the listeners that there is truly a higher power at work in their lives, and he is Almighty God the King of Kings, and the Alpha and the Omega. We see God's power at work all throughout the Bible. We see, uh, we see his power at Calvary when he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are, we are healed. He died and was buried in a borrowed tomb, Burned because he wasn't going to need it for very long. But he died on that Friday and was dead all day Saturday. But he was doing some work down in hell. He was dead to the living, but not to the he was dead to the living, but not to the dead. Okay? He conquered all the forces of the darkness of the enemy, Satan. And early, early Sunday morning, he got up from that grave with all power, all power in his hands. He was seen by many before ascending and returning to his heavenly father in heaven. Our psalm, our text today, 150 of Psalms, reminds us to praise the Lord. One thing we are to do is that we are to praise him everywhere. Yeah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him everywhere you are. Praise him when we come into his house. We should praise him. We should worship him. We should honor and reverence him. For he is more than worthy to be praised. And two, we are to praise him in his mighty firmament. And if we move back just a couple of uh, uh, Psalms to 148, we can see what that firmament consists of. For it tells us about praising the Lord from creation. Praise the Lord from heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all ye angels. Praise him, all ye hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. And three, then we are to praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. O oh Lord, huh, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Great is the Lord and mighty in power. For we're to use all the instruments that we have to worship the Lord. Even, huh, even, listen, even the instrument of your voice. Your voice is an instrument to praise God at all times. Five, let everything, everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Listen, God is telling us today that he's still looking for worshipers today. He's looking for true worshipers, not the ones that are pretending, but real worshipers. The time we spend in worship is not important, but sometimes we rush. It doesn't matter what the time is. When you sit down and you're in God's presence and you start worshiping him, you don't care what time is going on. You don't care what's going on around you. You don't care what appointment you have to make because you're in the middle of God's presence and you don't want to leave it because there is peace there there is calmness there there is love there that he showers down all around us and it is so tangible that 
you want to take it with you everywhere. And it changes you. Two, he is looking for those who worship the Father in the Spirit. In order to worship God in the right spirit, we must take time to study. We must take time to study and read the Word, the Bible, and ready our hearts and emotions so we will be in the right frame of mind. Lord, help us to be more attentive to you, to listen to you, and to do as you command. And three, he is looking for those who worship him in truth. It is an act of being honest and giving our whole being, our heart, our thoughts, and our emotions to God for his service. Why do we worship him? Well, let me tell you. I'm so glad that you asked. Because he's worthy. Yeah. Because he is the creator. Because he is the great I am that I am. Because he is the Abba Father, our Father who art in heaven. Because he is the Father of glory, the Father of all mercies and compassions. Because he is the shelter in the time of troubles and storms. Why do we worship God? Because he is our keeper. He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Because we trusted in him. Why do we worship him? We worship him because he is our fortress and he is our strong tower who keeps us away from the enemy at our heels. Why do we worship him? Because he is our paraclete, our comforter, our counselor and helper. Why do we worship him? Because he gives us wisdom and understanding to evaluate the options in life to make good decisions. Why do we worship him? Because he is everything to us and he's more than enough, more than enough. We praise him for who he is. We praise him for his finished work on Calvary. We praise him for his faithfulness and salvation. We praise him for his peace that passes all understanding. We praise him for his faith, for our hope, for our joy, for our provision, for our protection, and his everlasting love for us. We praise him for the guidance and the direction and the comfort given to us by the precious Holy Spirit. We praise him for all the things that he has done, great and small. Praise ye the Lord. The power, the power of praise and worship. To God be glory. To God be the glory. Great things. Great things. He has done. Ooh, man. Praise the Lord. The power of God has been shown at the cross at Calvary. He died for all of our sins. As he looked in the past, in the present, and in the future while he was on that cross and saw all of us who had already come, all of us who were there present, and all of us who were about to come into this world. He wanted to give us, he wanted to give us eternal life and a way back up to the Heavenly Father. So he stayed on that cross. He could have come down, but he didn't because he saw us coming. He stayed there and made a way for us and because he made a way for us, that we can praise him all the time. Again, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is to be praised. If, if, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and it might be somebody out there, you have the opportunity now to accept him right now. For all of us have sinned, and we've all come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. That means separation from God. And none of us, none of us wants to be separated from his love, from his everlasting redemption of our sins. None of us wants to do that. So therefore, now is the time to confess to God, to Jesus, Lord, I believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross for me, for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please accept me and wash away all those sins that I have done in the past. Remove them. Forgive them. Let them be washed with your blood. 
Let me be clean as white as snow because of what you did on Calvary. If you said a similar prayer to that, oh, and Jesus died. Lord, I know you died for me, and I know you rose again. And because you have risen again, you are alive forevermore. So if you have said a prayer similar to that, just call us and let us know. If you have, welcome, welcome to the family of God. Call us and we will tell you the next steps that need to be taken. In the meantime, for all of us, remember, remember who we are praising. Remember not to ignore him, but to remember to have him an integral part of our lives so we can continue praising him, so we can tell somebody about the goodness of God, so we can open up our mouths and praise and not be afraid, not to be ashamed, to be able to say what the good Lord has done for us. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Father God, thank you for the word. Thank you for the reminder to praise you and to worship you. Thank you, God, for being here with us. Thank you for your presence, Father God, that we were able to enter into your presence and you were able to speak to our hearts, thank God. We thank you for that, Father God. Now help us to be a better person, to be a better Christian, to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you. These things we ask in the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace both now and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. amen. And amen. amen. And amen. amen. Go in peace.
Yeah, I didn't. 